Hi folks, so you won't often hear me saying like lots of nice things about Microsoft software, mostly because I'm a big open source software advocate um, most of the time. But one of the things that Microsoft do very well is kind of the processes around designing secure software and actually, you know, having um, systematic approaches to thinking about security at the design stages. So what I'm going to do is just briefly discuss um, the, the threat modeling tool um, that Microsoft have um, released. And um, I'm just going to show you the sorts of uh, basically how you use it to do stride threat modeling. And I'm going to do a very basic example um, just to give you an idea of what, what you do. So um, just to be a little bit um, interesting about it, I'm going to just do a very basic um, threat model of set UID program on Linux, uh, the password program, a user setting their own password. So, um, so let's let's have a look at what that might look like. So let's start with adding the user. So it organizes, it, it has a bunch of different elements that we can use. Uh, and what we're after is um, the, the interactor. So let's just represent it as a human user. And we are um, going to have the password command that they're going to execute. So let's have a look. Um, we can just put native application. Um, and let's name it etc slash password. Uh, whoops, sorry, not etc slash password. In slash password. So, um, so the user is going to execute the, the program and it's, they're going to um, let's do a generic data flow. And we can name it um, they want to set their password. So they're like giving their, their new password, for example. And the password command is uh, that program is actually running set UID, so it's actually running at a um, higher privilege level. So we can add a um, trust border boundary around here. So this is actually set your ID program. So when it runs, it's running at this higher privilege level. And from within that, um, it's going to write to a file. Um, file system, I guess. And we can name that etc slash shadow. So the and we just need one more data flow really. So, um, you know, it generates and saves the hash in the shadow file, so it's updating the password. Um, so this is our basic, um, this is an example of a um, stride, um, like DFD, to do some threat modeling. And one of the really, like, cool things that this software can do is we can change our view from design view to analysis view. And now um, it can automatically suggest some things that we might want to think about in terms of security. So it's come up with 10 things for us to think about. 
not bad from this little diagram. So spoofing the human user external entity. Human user may be spoofed by an attacker and this may lead to unauthorized access to bin slash password. Consider using standard authentic authentication mechanism. Well, that is true. We need to be careful that they are who they say they are. Uh, one way we do that is to make them make sure they've authenticated first, which we could include in this diagram. So they, you know, they've set their own pass, they've shown their own password to demonstrate that they are who they say they are before we go about doing it. So that's a good thing for us to think about. Next one, elevation using impersonation. Bin password may be able to impersonate the con uh, the context of human user in order to gain additional privilege. Okay, so it's the password program pretending to be a user, okay. Uh, the password program may be spoofed by an attacker and can lead to information disclosure by a human user. Again, this is actually another really good real example where if there was a Trojan horse pretending to be the password command, if there's a way for um, that to be convincing, then the human user will uh, be giving their password to the wrong program, for example. Uh, so you can see here that we've got the um, you know, stride as being some of the main um, categories of threats that, that it's identifying. So tampering, data flowing um, across set password, maybe tampered with by an attacker. Uh, that would be probably not that realistic on a standard Linux system that the standard I.O. is being tampered with. Um, but certainly that would be worth considering. And if this was a network based um, um, communication data flow, then that would definitely be something you need to think carefully about. Uh, that the information can be tampered in transit. Um, where are we? So, data flow sniffing. So, the, the, that information can be sniffed by an attacker. Um, again, it's probably not the case, but it would be worth um, thinking carefully about how the way that TTY's um, interaction works and whether other users on the system can listen in on them. Um, but again, more this would be more realistic if we were talking about a network-based um, communication. Uh, someone listening in on that. Um, if it crashes, then things stop working. That's obviously true. So how do you write the software in a way that it doesn't like stop working when it crashes or recovers gracefully. Um, external agent interrupts data flowing across the trust boundary in either direction. So, you know, that I won't, the, I mean, there's not that many more, I guess. The, uh, I was going to say we won't go through them all, but I, we've almost finished. Um, bin password may be subject to elevation privilege using remote code execution. Um, maybe able to remotely execute code. Um, so, well, the remote code execution part would be more if this was a network based communication, but it's still relevant that the uh, could get arbitrary code execution. So if there is a programming fault in the password command, um, like a buffer overflow, for example, then the human user could end up running code within the context of that process, which means that they are now running within that elevated, um, you know, Across that trust boundary, which is a, a bad thing. Uh, an attacker may pass data to bin password in order to change the flow of the program execution. Again, it's a similar thing that we just talked about. So, um, changing the execution flow. So, using my code execution. Okay. Well, they're closely related. So change the execution flow could include something like a buffer overflow attack uh, where we manage to overwrite the IP um, and change the control flow within that program to make it do something it's not supposed to be able to do. Um, it was not supposed to do, including just behaving differently because you've managed to like get it to execute different code. Um, Cross-site request forgery. That's an interesting one for it to suggest for this one, but um, you know, I guess um, so. Cross-site request forgery is type of attack where a 
um, make a forge request to forces the user's browser to make a forge request to a vulnerable site by exploiting an existing trust relationship. Um, so, I mean, that's um, all of that confused, the confused deputy problem where you manage to get one program to execute another program. The, the actual cross-site request forgery is not relevant here because we're not using web browsers or web sites and, and the rest of it. But the basic idea there of there being a um, confused deputy problem, which is where you can trick one program into doing, uh, to doing something that it's not supposed to do um, so that you can basically, if you could use the password program to start accessing other files, for example, or running other programs, um, then they might also end up executing in this higher privilege level, uh, set your ID environment, <clears throat> which would be bad. Um, so those are all relevant things that you'd want to think about in the design of this system. And this is all only a very high level diagram uh, for one specific uh, feature, but you can drill down a lot lower, you can pull out separate processes and think about all the different steps within that bin um, password program. You could draw a whole other diagram, pulling apart the innards of what that does and analyzing each of those components. I hope this like very brief overview gives you a good concrete idea about what this kind of looks like in practice, where we're doing this as part of the design process of some software, uh, where we're developing software, and we can even do it after the fact like we did just here, where we're trying to think about the things that could go wrong um, in terms of the security. And also just helps us to figure out where all our trust boundaries are, you know, all the attack surface. So any way that we can communicate with anything that's at a different privilege level is attack surface. That's something where we have the potential of trying to break, um, trying to break it uh, by, ac by accessing, accessing the different interfaces that we have um, available to us and doing things that wasn't expected. So that's Strad Threat Modeling. Um, using Microsoft's threat modeling tool.